I, I mean, I no, don't. What would you do if you were locked in a room for just for really quick. six years? Well, I wouldn't be a cyber terrorist, which he is. He's he hacked information. He didn't leaks hack. included classified documents that put our national security at risk, our military, you know who and the lives of spies risk and diplomats is the, is the at risk. military. Who, how many people have the, military, the American so, government killed innocently, and how many has WikiLeaks? So oh. you think the military is putting the government at risk? The military has put many innocent Are lives you at risk. Oh, calm down, sir. <laughs> for real. Hi, Eric. It's Megan. I am going to be a little bit of a voice of dissension on this. An overwhelming number of polls show that the majority of Americans think that what you're doing is wrong. So how do you respond to that, and do you think it's just racism? Well, that's why I'm here today, to try and re-entrain the, the, the control of our narrative. Um, it's been misconstrued as being disrespectful to the flag, the military, in the anthem, and I'll start by saying, I have the utmost respect for your father, my mother who served, and, and anybody who serves and protect our country. Men and women in the military should know that and hear that, but Mike Pence left a game, and I understand that you said it was an act of, quote, systemic oppression. So if I left your football game, would you think that I would be behaving in the same way? You're not the vice president of the United States. Fair enough. Uh Let me just interject really quickly. I would never be comfortable supporting someone who called, I'm not anti-Semite and I'm anti-termite. It's the wicked Jews, the false Jews that are promoting lesbianism, homosexuality. I actually spoke with the journalist from Tablet Magazine who released an investigation report on your organization. And in part, they allege that there is a lot of anti-Semitism surrounding this march. Specifically, the report alleged that you, Tamika, and co-founder Carmen Perez asserted that, quote, Jewish people had a history of exploiting black people and were proven to be leaders of the American slave trade. Trade. Now, a lot of people, by a lot of people, I include me in this, think that you're using your organization as anti-Semitism masked in activism and that you're using identity politics to shield yourself from critiques. You're talking about all women being invited to that march. I'm pro-life. We were not invited. We were, we were not allowed at that march right there. I'm a conservative woman. I also represent, if you're talking about women, you should be talking about all women, including Jewish women as well, and conservative women. Well, well Megan, so are those allegations true? Oh. Yeah, well, well, first of all, those allegations are not true. That is not how that meeting happened. And the Women's March... So the journalist I spoke to was lying? The, the people that the journalist spoke to did not tell the truth. That the Women's March unequivocally condemns anti-Semitism, bigotry... To condemn Farrakhan's remarks about Jewish people. Yes, and we have repeatedly, in statement after statement... That but I think I'm just confused. Mm -hmm. These remarks are... Yeah. I mean, it goes on death to Israel over yeah, and over so again. We did not make those remarks. We did not make those remarks. You can't but you're associating me. with a man and who so does I, what publicly. I will, what I will say to you is that I don't agree with many of Minister Farrakhan's statements. That's Specifically a, about Jewish people. As I said, I don't agree with many of Minister Farrakhan's statements do you uh, condemn them? I don't agree with these statements. At the end of the day... You won't condemn the, it. No, no. Listen to me. Shut the fuck up. And I think it is very clear over the 20 years of my own personal activism, my own personal track record, who I am, and that I should never be judged through the lens of a man. That's that right. is actually not what this women's movement is supposed to be about.
And Ben Dominic is her husband and also a notorious plagiarist who got fired from the Washington Post after working there for three days because he was plagiarizing. Anyway, he wanted to share his thoughts in now deleted tweets on Twitter. And he said the following. Again, Seth Meyers, parts of his family are Jewish. Guess whose website defended the South Carolina adoption slash foster agency that turned away prospective foster parents for being Jewish? If you answered Ben Dominic's The Federalist, you're right. And they've also printed such philosophical articles with headlines such as, pedophilia isn't the main problem with Catholic priests, homosexuality is. Are you serious? Yes. Okay, and here's another one. Christianity can't be stretched to endorse homosexuality. Beach Boy song, Bomberan. <laughs> bom, 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 bom. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, you issued a statement calling, calling Soleimani a murderer. Later, you issued a second statement saying that he was, quote, an assassination of a senior foreign military official. Now, this is a man who obviously is responsible for hundreds of American troops, deaths, carnage that we can't even imagine. The Treasury Department and the State Department have both ne <coughs> designated the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the flip-flop. I, I don't understand why it was so hard to call him a terrorist, and I would just like you to explain. The question for the President of the United States is to understand what's going on, have an overall strategy, and pick an appropriate response. And going back to Kobe's question, though, do you at think he's an a terrorist? appropriate right. time. He's part of a group that has but been designated. is he desi a terrorist? He is part of a group that's been designated. So he's not a terrorist. <laughs> He is, he's okay. part of a group that our federal government has designated as a terrorist. The question though, is what's the right response? And the response that Donald Trump has picked is the most incendiary and has moved us right to the edge of war. And that is not in our long-term yeah, interest. Well, people, even Democrats, and there are a lot of pro-life Democrats in the country, want to know exactly where your line is, because you will be the president if you win. Right, but my point is that it shouldn't be up to a government official to draw the line. It should be up to the woman who's confronted with the choice. Purple woman wanted to, I don't know, uh, invoke infanticide after a baby was born, you'd be but comfortable Does anybody with that. seriously think that's what these I, cases I are about? Listen to me! I'm done listening. You are officially crazy. Crazy? You want to see crazy? Think, think about the situation. That, yes. If you if this is a late term situation, then by definition, it's one where a woman was expecting to carry the pregnancy to term. Then she gets the most perhaps devastating news of her life. We're talking about families that that may have picked out a name, maybe assembling a crib, and they learn something excruciating, and are faced with this terrible choice. And I don't know what to tell them uh, morally about what they should do. I just know that I, I trust her and her decision medically or morally isn't gonna be any better because the government is commanding her to do it in a certain way. I respect way. the answer. Um, just to put a peg on this. I don't know why everyone's clapping. No, because I take, I take issue with everybody clapping. I respect what you're saying because you didn't back down from it. This is gonna hurt you in the middle of the country with the Republicans you're trying to win over. People like me, this is a hard line and mm -hmm. quite frankly, that question, that answer is just pretty, ra you're just as radical as I thought it was. Away with it. Ridiculous, I'm leaving. No, you're not leaving, you're yeah. under citizen's arrest. Bye, Karen. No, stop. resources, those public resources, to where they need to go, which is addressing mental health, homelessness, uh, substance abuse, so that we don't have to have a police response because we are smarter. 
Senator, I hear you loud and clear, and I don't think there's any rational American right now who doesn't think that we need to take a cold, hard look at reforming our police. But there was a video that went viral over the weekend of the mayor of Minneapolis being yelled at, saying, yes or no question, are you for defunding the police? So I'm going to ask the same question the protesters asked him. Are you for defunding the police? How are you defining defund the police? Um, Did y'all get I better candy? Why she throw her back? What's wrong, Minnie? This bitch is trying me. Oh, wow. Lord, we back to that. Well, I'm not for anything remotely for that, so I would ask the protesters but, the same but, thing, but I assume it's, re I assume, and again, this is something that is new to me, I assume it's removing police. Oh, <laughs> what the f You f idiot. And as um, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar said, bringing in a whole new way of, of governing and a law and order into, into a community. And my understanding, again, this is something that has just come into my understanding recently, is that you, you would not have police officers like this Minneapolis City Councilwoman said, that I would be a place of privilege if someone broke into my home and I wanted to call the police. Maybe I am just a unicorn from another planet, but <laughs> climate change doesn't even hit my top 30 of how I vote for somebody's. My dad says you're a joke and I don't have to listen to you. So I do think I am on this panel to say this isn't what's selling me on you eating Trump. <laughs> Watch mm -hmm. What's also not selling me on beating Trump is the new Green Deal, which all of the 2020 contenders have endorsed. Mm -hmm. um, it would cost $93 trillion or to every person in this room, $600,000 per each of your households. Do you think that plan, thank you, ma'am, is practical <laughs> or have you endorsed it or do you have another option? Because when I hear that an average American is going to have to spend $600,000 for a new Green Deal, you can understand how people like me don't think that's logical. Well, this is a lot like the death panels you heard about in Obama. Care. The Republicans talked about death panels. Yeah. We didn't have death panels and we don't have $600,000 cost. Mm -hmm. This is a, a thing that I think has been helpful in our discussion in a variety of ways. Number one, we're talking about climate change. That is a value. But we're also you, talking about high ambition. Could you give an example ambition. to just the average person in here how, mm -hmm. how they can help where it, do, it doesn't sound so irrational. I mean, we're talking about $51 trillion, mm -hmm. the elimination of planes, uh, the elimination of cows, a railway, no planes. I guess nobody can go to Hawaii anymore. It doesn't sound that rational to me. Uh, it isn't rational because those are the things that so the Donald Trump deal said. Is not we rational. are not going to eliminate cars. We are not going to eliminate trains. A lot of environmentalists don't walk the walk, they just talk the talk, and then they want the average American to spend $600,000 in their household, and none of this adds up. said that wasn't really true. But, no. but, I'm, but the, that's what's proposed on the New Green Deal. Actually, that is not what is proposed. Let's get this straight. That is not proposed in the New Green Deal, okay? <laughs> Then I guess, Governor, you've got no problems with voters then. We don't. Okay, so <laughs>Climate change has been going on since the beginning of time because it's called winter, spring, summer, fall.
think there's a divide that we've seen over and over with Republicans. There are a lot of people that have conservative ideals that say, at what point am I giving up my humanity yeah, for this? And give up because power. The that's right. They, no, that's but, right. But, but, there is, I'm Tom, sorry. Let, let me say, no, let me say something, Sarah. Let me finish. I no, let, let me finish. Pinky. Pinky, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we got a wildcat on our hands. Pinky, settle down, bud. <laughs> Careful, Cole. Right. He has undermined the party. Yes. Are they complicit? Well, that's yeah, the problem. By not, the holding, him, right by not holding him right. accountable, they are complicit. Are they you could, complicit? We could have had a sane Republican do exactly the same things. We didn't need Donald Trump to right. just do it. Jeb so Bush he had wasn't the only $100 million. Dollars. Jeb Bush had $100 yes. million dollars and, and he still couldn't pull candidate. this off. Because the messaging is off. Why don't I get a catch pole? Somebody get a catch pole. Here, here. There was video of, of things that happened. I, I mean, I don't. What would you do if you were locked up. in a room for just for really quick. six years? Well, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be a cyber terrorist, which he is. He's he hacked information. He didn't leaks hack. included classified documents that put our national security at risk, our military, you know who and the lives of spies risk and diplomats is the, is the at military. Risk. Who, how many people have the, military, the American so, government killed innocently, and how many has WikiLeaks? So, so you think the military is putting the government at risk? The military has put many innocent lives at risk. Oh, calm down, sir. So, <laughs> for real, I, I'm actually genuinely there curious about your relationship be, with him. There, yeah, war crimes need to be punished, and they haven't. The, the war crimes that he's exposed, no one's, no one's done anything about it. I mean, the question they I have though emails, is like, she wrote what would them, you so. say to? I know, but that doesn't mean everything should be. The question I have though is like spies that go out and put their lives at risk, like Congressman Wilhurd, who we were just talking about, who's dedicated, you know, decades of his life to helping fight terrorism. It's classified information, I believe, is classified for a reason. I do have some faith in the U.S. government. I already told you. Oh, as a conservative, yeah. I have less faith normally than liberals do. So what would you say to the spies who are putting themselves at risk for our national security go. with your well, relationship with him? Well, I don't think he, there's nothing proven that he's actually put anybody at risk. Um, they've, they've gone through this over and over again. And I just, I think that people like Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning are heroes and, and uh, Julian Assange is a publisher. Putin also he's, thinks that. But you know, also Pam, he, um, <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's still not very nice to treat her like that. I mean, she's like stupid. But he's not saying his opinion, he's I, giving the information. I get that, you would be, he's, he's a, a publisher. Whistle, I get but, that you consider him a whistleblower. Well, he, he's a but publisher. But he's also dangerous. Yeah. But he's a publisher and he's a whistle, he publisher and he uh, supports well, he whistleblowers. He certainly stirred up a lot in yes. this country. Yes, well that's, he's um, a cyber terrorist. I, I, well, I'll, I'll say it. Uh, the Republican I'll Party. I'll say it. It's ridiculous. I'm not going to stand by this. It's ridiculous. Oh, we're going to have a little bit of fun next segment. Yes. Okay, um, that's fine. Yeah. We can Anderson is sticking around. Uh, we'll be right back a lot after of this. trouble. And you're just a kid, and you should be respectful of your elders. I'm calling everybody that was in that North Carolina rally a Nazi. So you have to understand, from my standpoint, it seems like the left is pretty extreme in that end as well. No, I'm, I'm not calling everyone who, who was in that You compared his rally. rally to Nuremberg and his reporters well, to person. Nazis. A He's just asking one. for women uh, of color we, to, to, we, to go back to, to their own that. country and then connect Trump it with everything Nazis. else that he's doing, the press as the enemy of the people. That there is only one path that that will what take about us his supporters, down. supporters, the people in that room? At that well, rally. We, we all have accountability for our actions, and, and everyone who shouted to send them back is responsible for that as well. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. Jerry didn't and you're gonna have to win over some of these people that voted for Obama and then voted for Trump again and for me I did not support it we spent a whole week de decrying that and you have to understand how it looks for people in the middle be thinking that maybe I don't agree with everything the left is saying so automatically you're Nazis we're, we're, we're on the same page Megan I, I went to every one of the 254 counties of Texas <laughs> Thank you.
Miss Trumpets, Megan. Look, I think I've made it clear to your publishers, I don't like books like this. I don't like family tell-all books, especially when it comes to families with fame and power, because I they're told from the one side, and often the subjects are villainized to the point that I don't actually end up believing the stuff written. There have been books about my family, which are complete and total garbage, told from a skewed mm -hmm. perspective. And the end of the day, you get a really good paycheck out of it, but I don't think it's that legitimate. Um, what do you say to people like me who think this is just a great way for you to get a paycheck right now? Well, you're, you're entirely entitled to your opinion. Um, I think if you read the book, um, you see that I bring to the story my very deep experience within the family. I'm not some stranger writing it. I'm I'm his niece. But you're not close uh, enough with the family where you say you have any relationship with Ivanka. I mean, I think the last thing I understand is that you did end up going to her wedding, but you thought you were only invited as a courtesy. So again, I just know in my family, and my family's clearly nothing like the Trumps, but the people who are close who are close, I certainly have extended family who I don't interact with or certainly only interact with at funerals and things like that. So I, I don't think people like that would know the inner workings of my immediate family dynamic in the way that you present it? Well, I'd love to answer your question. Um, I am not extended family. Donald's my my dad's younger brother. Good, but I do think if you were probably close to that family, you would probably know your cousins, Don Jr. and Ivanka, on a level that you clearly don't. I'm not entirely sure why you're so focused on my cousins, who, again, are so much younger than I am. Um, so I guess what I would say, first of all, I, I did not go to the White House on the tax paradigm. That's a quite absurd thing to say. But families are extremely complicated. Uh, you know, the administration was at that point less than four months old. Um, I was going there for my aunt's birthdays, uh, you know, not to uh, take advantage of Donald's position. And I think to focus on these things is to take away from the actually uh, important things I write about in the book. Congresswoman, um, thank you for coming on. I really am glad that you decided to come and talk to us. Um, I feel like you're the boogie woman of the right, and I'm the boogie woman of the left, so it's interesting to be talking to you. You ain't nobody. What you're proposing and what Bernie Sanders pro is proposing, you said that Fox was like ushering in the apocalypse with both of you, but to conservatives like me who mm -hmm. think that big government is very, very dangerous, it is like the apocalypse. The apocalypse. The apocalypse. I hope you get it together. Mm -hmm. I hope you do so. Oh, girl. Do you know how many, what percent of American workers make less than $40,000 a year? Mm-hmm. Almost 60%. percent mm. 60% of Americans You can't are, live on that in New York. You can't live no on that way. in New York, and you can barely live on that anywhere. You can't you live, live on, on that, that if you have kids. No. And, um, and I think that that reality, personally, does require a paradigm shift. Um, this isn't working for us. And a $2.1 trillion tax cut, which has been deemed capitalism at its finest, doesn't work for us. Right. Um, dying? You're losing your husband because he couldn't afford insulin because big pharma cares about profits more than people as capitalism at its finest does not work for us. So I want to talk about the Bernie bros. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that connects women on the left and women on the right, I have found at least a lot of guest hosts, a lot of guests that have come on over the three years I've been here, is the abuse that we have all been subjected to by Bernie bros. It is by far, of anything I've ever done in my entire life, the most violent. The president has divided this country so yeah. 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 Look, that He has a group out there just throwing the hell out. The most misogynistic, the most sexist. Clinton needs to get her ass spanked. The most harmful. My mother has cried over doctored photos Bernie Brothers have sent me, and I'm just one story. <laughs> He has a real problem, mm -hmm. and I don't think that he's doing enough to tamper it down. Mm -hmm. If it were anyone, I'd say this has no representative of me. It's disgusting. It's vitriolic, and every time I see him talk about it, he's like, doesn't represent me. Move on. Mm -hmm. You're a 
extremely powerful woman. How do you feel that he's attached to this mm -hmm. deeply misogynistic, and I would go so far as to say violent, mm -hmm. sector of people? Deeply misogynistic, and I would go so far as to say violent, mm -hmm. sector of people. You are possibly one of the ugliest people I have ever had to have the misfortune of sharing my time with. No amount of lip gloss will disguise the ugliness that lives inside of you. Yeah, you know, and I think um, internet culture can often be very toxic, and whether we are cognizant of it or not, it nearly always concentrates on women, people of color, mm -hmm. queer people. Definitely. Um, and we experience the brunt of it. And um, I think, you know, I, I think that to a certain extent, you know, we have to always reject hate, reject vitriol, um, and denounce that kind of behavior. Um, also, you know, we also know the amount of anonymous activity that happens on the internet, and that simply is difficult. It is difficult to control when you have like a, you know, a, a, a Twitter handle with a bunch of numbers on it with mm -hmm. two followers that are lobbying vitriol at you, we don't know where that comes from, yeah. but I know that it doesn't Do you think come he's done enough pain. to try and stop it? You know, I think he works very hard. I think we send out, so we send out um, messaging emails, and you know what, it's, I've been subject to a lot of this stuff from all sorts of the, all sorts of pockets of, from the internet. ICE and CBP officers um, targeted me on Facebook for attacks when I went yeah. to visit the border. Um, they photoshopped, you know, people who are supposed to be protecting immigrants and children, uh, photoshopped. He's got to do more. Horrendous. He's got to, he's got to, he's got he's to stand up and say it every day if he needs to. Yeah. Stop this. We're not accepting so, it. Sure. It's not good.